folks, it's me, Hannah. Hey. Okay, so, um, here's the thing. Uh, depending on each of our own respective um, upbringings, you know, um, and, grow and our growing up experiences, um, coming out may be more or less of a challenge. Yet, um, for folks like me, uh, who came from um, like a conservative uh, society, even when we had left our own respective conservative societies um, into a more welcoming uh, society or into, a, into an open and welcoming society, welcoming but transitioning instead, our own perspective, like restrictions, um, programming uh, that we have already established um, itself, um, our own self locks, our own restrictive, like self self restricting ways of thinking thinking um, can work against our own respective respective uh, coming out efforts yet my mom's my hero uh, there are many reasons why she's my hero uh, amongst the many reasons she showed me how to break out of a limited um, scope of thinking, how to break out of the conservative box. Uh, she showed me that there's a whole world outside of the conservative uh, box. And uh, she showed me how to live freely, how to think freely, and um, the importance of living freely and thinking freely, and the beauty of the real world, um, being able to enjoy the beauties of the real world outside of the conservative box and our um, limited um, way of thinking. Yep. I didn't get a chance to come out to my mom, but I have a feeling that she would have been fine with it. Okay, so it's one thing to have a belief in some alternative reality, um, and or some alternative um, opinions about things, um, especially alternative opinions about things based on um, ignorance and fear. But it's another thing altogether to impose that belief upon somebody else especially if that belief is not grounded in reality. For example, uh, the concept of the earth being flat. So the flat earth concept. It is the 21st century at time of recording this video and it's been proven beyond doubt that um, the earth is not flat. Yeah, but instead more or less spherical in shape. That said, even though we may each have our own respective progress to believe in whatever we want to believe in, uh, would it make sense for us to limit somebody else uh, from exploring outside 
of our beliefs and finding out the truth for themselves. Right? Right. Like for example, in the case, case of uh, the fact that the concept, the concept has been debunked, the truth easily proves otherwise. It's really important for us to allow ourselves to see the concept for what it is and um, to allow ourselves to openly embrace the truth instead of making fools out of ourselves and spreading such silly ungrounded opinions um, and or even going out of our own respective ways to impose rules, restrictions, and or even um, impose like or um, recommend laws, uh, criminalize those aware of the truth, right? Right. As someone who has um, taken pride in herself, in being well-grounded um, in reality and science and uh, the truth. It feels saddening to see um, someone who's actively trying to keep themselves inside their own little bubble um, out of perhaps out of fear, perhaps out of ignorance, or whatever their own reasons may be. While they do have their own respective prerogatives to steer that way or be that way, um, they definitely do not have any rights to impose that their narrow uh, perspectives on those of us who are actually in the real world, who are in touch with reality and who are aware of the bigger picture. Right? Right. Okay, so here's an analogy. Um, a six-year-old versus a meteorologist. A meteorologist, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term, it's a fancy word um, that describes a professional scientist who specializes in the field of um, atmospheric and or weather phenomena. Right? Right. So, imagine one day a six-year-old comes up with a silly idea that winds were caused by trees flapping their tree branches back and forth. Well, the six-year-old has to start somewhere to understand the concept of winds, right? Um, how winds work, how winds are formed, and stuff like that. Um, it's a start. So, uh, for example, right? Um, the six-year-old goes to a meteorologist and tells that idea, idea, that concept. And the meteorologist replies to the six-year-old that that's not how winds actually work. Well, the six-year-old has at least a couple of choices. And one of the choices would be to accept the meteorologist's um, professional explanation well-researched and well-grounded explanation on how winds actually work. Or the six-year-old can stubbornly hold on to the idea that the winds 
were actually made uh, by tree branches flapping back and forth. Now imagine the six-year-old goes a step further and uh, convinces uh, a lawmaker to impose a law criminalizing those who do not believe that winds were caused by trees flapping. How silly is that, right? Right. And for a meteorologist, a specialist in weather and or atmospheric phenomena, it's just the law would just be absurd, right? Right. Um, so, there, that's an analogy. The concept of having only two genders is an example of an ungrounded concept that has been disproven by science. Okay, so gender identity is not a choice. It's not even a deeply regarded feeling. It's actually an awareness of what's really going on. Imagine, for example, hypothetically speaking, um, if we were to um, have a gasoline powered truck and we were at a gas station and uh, the owner of the gas station had only seen trucks with diesel engines and comes over and tells us to refuel our gasoline powered truck with diesel. Would it, would it, would it then be our preference to refuel our gasoline powered truck with gasoline? Would it make sense for us to tell the, the owner of the gas station that it is my preference to refuel my gasoline powered truck with gasoline? Would it make sense? No. We would just tell the um, um, gas station owner that the truck is actually powered by a gasoline engine. Um, that is why we're refueling the, the gasoline powered truck with gasoline and that we cannot refuel the gasoline powered truck with diesel and that is why we're refueling it with gasoline instead of diesel and it is not a preference. Right? Right. So I guess what we can take home um, out of this story um, of a six-year-old and a meteorologist is it's important for us to not prevent ourselves from exploring, uh, not prevent ourselves from fact-checking fact on our own beliefs and ideas. Um, it's really, really important for us to um, be well grounded in reality and in the truth. Um, yep, so yeah, um, just because we came up with an idea doesn't necessarily mean that we, we, uh, we have to defend the idea. Well, we all need to start somewhere in our own respective journeys, in our own respective desires to discover and find out for ourselves the truth about things, it is of paramount importance for us to allow ourselves to properly guide ourselves to the proper path of learning and to allow ourselves to let go of our own ungrounded childhood fantasies and silly ideas when we realize them for what they are, ungrounded 
childhood fantasies and silly ideas. Right? Correct. And for goodness sake, let's not impose our own respective ungrounded beliefs and ideas upon others, especially when those ungrounded beliefs and ideas can cause harm to innocent folks. In other words, grow up. Well, transgenderism is um, a broad and complicated topic. I don't expect everybody to understand transgenderism. In fact, transgenders ourselves may not even understand every single aspect of transgenderism. Right, right. In my case, I'm a male to female transsexual. Uh, so it's one of the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, one of the sections um, of the transgender uh, umbrella term, right? Right. So, yeah, um, we don't have to understand transgenderism. We don't have to be an expert in transgenderism to practice decency towards transgenders and transgender folks. Um, basic human decency, like not imposing laws that can hurt transgenders, um, like not um, discriminating against transgenders. Like, transgenders are not much different from cisgenders. I mean, um, it's even if we were to think of transgenders as like a vertical line, right? Transgenders and cisgenders. There are both like, um, there's so many different like classifications of transgenders. It really depends on the person. Some may be uh, rich, some may be not so rich, some may be um, professional. Um, like me, some may not be so professional. Um, it's like some may be good, um, like me, some may not be so good. Um, so um, uh, transgenderism in and of itself it is not like does not define a person. It's just um, the fact that uh, the person, is aware of the true gender um, instead of the uh, the outer like, features and stuff. So, um, if we're having difficulty understanding how a person could have a, an awareness that is different from the external features, then that's our own lack of understanding, right? But that doesn't give us the right to impose laws and restrictions to hurt um, transgenders, right? Right. Live freely and let live freely. Haters!